What is up everybody? We are going to be cracking a box of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms uh, Magic Set set box that uh, pre-release just happened this weekend. Um, I was super ecstatic about this. I've waited a very, very long time for a uh, Magic D&D set. I mean, obviously it's owned by the same company, so why haven't they made one yet? D&D um, has been the most popular it has ever been, so I kind of uh, planned it perfectly. Got cool beholder looking at you right there. Um, so my thoughts on the set. Um, every, everybody's talking about how it's a very underwhelming set. Clearly, Modern Horizons 2 just came out, so a lot of people are still kind of reeling from the power level of that set. But I think it's just magic in general has overpowered the last couple of sets. And you hear people complaining about it all the time, like, oh, I can't wait until all these powerful sets rotate, blah, 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 blah. Um, and this is, I think, what they need to do. I think they need to calm down for a bit, let some sets rotate, and power down the card level a little bit. Um, I don't think it'll affect Standard at all, because players that still don't want to play Standard will find an excuse not to play it. But um, I just think that the power level on cards has been ridiculous. So hopefully this will help it out a bit and then get back on track on making sets, um, you know, worth buying, but not just ridiculous. So, all right, let's get a rocking, shall we? Do, 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 do. So again, they have the art cards coming back again. Um, I like art cards. I think they're cool. Oop, let me get that. I have a good set there. Um... It really emphasizes the art a little bit that we've lacked in the past, that people have just kind of forgotten about magic, that art is awesome, and you should look a little bit deeper in it. So right off the bat, Circle of Dreams. It's like a little Priest of Titania. Um, clearly not as good because it's a three drop, triple green, but that's the, definitely going to be a power player. And we've got a rare right off the bat, Meteor Swarm. Triple red X. It's like a fireball, super fireball. Not a bad opener. Fireball Priest of Titania right off the bat. So, oh, some little lizard guy. Um, I love these. Oops, I dropped it. I love the enchant classes. Um, I think they'll add some cool effects to the game. Um, I got a green one and a sealed, and oh my god, the green class is broken. The white one is pretty bad too. The white rare, those are so good. Hey, look at that. I got the art card and the rare in the same pack. It's kind of funny. Menace, Pack Tactics. I think Pack Tactics is pretty good. Um, whenever uh, whenever you attack with a power total of 6 or greater, it usually triggers something. I think 6 is the perfect number. A little far there. Um, six, is, 6 is easily gettable. One pump spell, one big creature, one small Pack Tactic creature. Dragon Art right off the bat. Druid class. Shambling Dust. Oh, there's Drist. Look at that. Double Strike 3-3 three, three for 5. Tons of abilities. In that same pool that I got that green uh, class in Shaman, I did to get a Drist. So, it's kind of cool. It's a very powerful shield that I did. Um, I got the Dancing Scimitars. I also got the Paladin that lets you adventure when you play him and attack with him. So, it was a very powerful sealed pool. Um, there's lots of flying dragons in the set, so um, sealed gets crazy when it comes to powerful flyers. Ooh, look at what is that? Is it supposed to be a wannabe shooting star? It's definitely something wrong with art on that one. Where's the whip? Oh, it's his whip. That's crazy. I actually have his whip coming up and around and up and off there. I didn't even notice that before. That's crazy. Not too powerful of a planeswalker. Uh, a lot of planeswalkers in. Ooh, I got a list card. Clave Cryptologist. A lot of planeswalkers in the set are kind of kept in check. There's not a super powerful planeswalker, which is again something that I. I hate planeswalkers. I have always talked about my. Ooh, this cool classic art. I love the old art too. It has an old D and D feel to it, so it fits right home with the the theme of the set. Wizard Spellbook, one of the roll cards, making copies. Seven mana means this thing better do a lot because double rare. Sphere Annihilation and a uh, Chattering Skeleton. 
Look at that, we're gonna enter the dungeon. Um, I love the enter the dungeon mechanic. I was afraid it was gonna be too powerful because you're gonna get a bunch of triggers and a bunch of abilities that are gonna be tacked on to things you're doing already and you're gonna run away with the game. Um, but after playing it, I feel the adventure mechanic was actually right on par. It did just enough, but not too much. Oswald Fiddlebender. Sacrifice an artifact. Search your library for an artifact covering them cost one plus the sacrifice mana's value. Mana's well, kind of cool, too, dude. Um, but dungeon adds enough of changes to the game and enough interaction that you can. They also got to reprint a bunch of cards that are similar, like counter target spell, adventure, do two damage, adventure. So there's a lot of refunctionality that they can bring back cards and just tack on adventure, so they can do stuff, uh, make cards a little bit different than just. Oh look, it's the same guard again. It's the same card again. Ooh, Werewolf Pack Leader. This guy's going to be amazing. 2 mana, 3-3, three, three. and if you attack with 6 or greater power, you get to draw a card, and then on top of it for 4 mana, he turns into a 5-3. It's basically you attack with one other dude, and you're triggering pack and drawing a card. But if not, you're, you're still getting a 3-3 three, three body for 2. That's pretty good. I think that guy's definitely going to see some play. May even squeeze into some weird modern beatdown decks. Some good be able to keep your power going by ooh look at that beautiful beholder um keep your power level going by drawing cards once you should kind of start sputtering out oh there it is ranger class this i think is probably gonna be the most broken of the classes maybe the white paladin one will be pretty good but um this is just amazing a two two for two and then you level it up for a cheap cost and you're getting a three three for two and then late game you just have a card engine so, Ranger class by far, best enchantment class in there. Ochre jelly. Jelly that splits and makes jellies. Kind of cool. Get your jelly on. Um, and then you have all of the, the class abilities that have flavor text don't really do anything they're just there to add flavor to the card I like it it's kind of fun hive of the eye tyrant not bad for a black land coming to play tap Ooh, there we go again four mana for what this thing does it's again it keeps things in check oh there that's cool that is awesome looking that's the first time I think I've seen a foil throwback card but gelatinous key oh that is so pretty that is, that's a power pack right there but um, venture for plus one. Again, venture is good, but you know, for four mana, just a venture. Doesn't seem that good. Look at the top six cards of your library, reveal a creature card from them, put them in your hand, gain three life, put the rest on the bottom. Again, that's all. Then the minus seven is you get plus two, plus two for each different named dungeon you've completed, and that you get trample and haste. So four, five, six, seven. You gotta pump it up three times to get your super overrun hasty effect. That's a lot of work for a four mana planeswalker that's not doing much else. So. Maybe it's good against control, keeps your creatures flowing, so. Oh, that's an interesting stamp. Not like a signature, it's like a stamp. I mean, some artists do that stamp style, so that's crazy. I haven't seen that before. Dungeon map. One of my favorite artworks. Wit. Two mana, three, two comes in play tap. Might kill something, you get a two, two black zombie. And another list card, Nifflin. Beholder. Pass this card. Mind Flare. Five mana, three, three. Eh. When Mind Flare enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature for as long as you control Mind Flare. That one's not a bad one. Sleeping Potion. Um, in the past, Mind Control for five has been meh. But you tack it on a three, three body. Is it going to be good enough? Maybe. We'll see. Go down to the map. True Polymorph. Target artifact or creature becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature for six mana. Again, that's kind of that rough. It's that fun mark, but six mana is pushing it. Six mana to copy something. Rogue class. 
I haven't seen this one before. Whatever creature you control these combat damage, if you sell a top card of that player's library, face down, you may play that as long as you remain in exile. Creatures you control of menace, eh, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, for all, for the rest of the game, that's pretty good. You may play cards of exile rogue, and you may spend mana as though they were of any color. So that's got some long term value. So we're going to start ripping stuff off your opponent's deck and getting super card advantage. Oh, look at that. That's cool. So that's in the first slot, and look at that. Um, so it's interesting because it's definitely is probably one of the makes your cards look the craziest we've seen them before. Um, obviously, it's based off of the old artwork style and the old D&D books. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Oh, Inferno of the Star Mounts. 6-6 six, six, can't be countered. For 6, Flying Haste. A dragon that has haste is always something to be afraid of. Notoriously in the past, hasted dragons. Ooh, it's a double land pack. Dragons with haste in the past have always seen play. Especially on a big body like this. And it can get pumped, so I'm sure that guy's going to see play. Cave of the Frost Dragon. If you control two or more other lands, enters play Battlefield Tapped. So it means late game. It's not doing as much, so you don't um, watch out for that. But uh, Cave of Frost Dragon becomes a 3-4 white dragon creature with flying talent of turn. It's still a land. Very reminiscent of the main lands that it, uh, activate, beat people up. So of the blue-white one. Colonnade, Celestial Colonnade. Another cool art. Unicorn. Oh, back to back Frost Dragon. So you can say how weird that's going to be when someone's playing, playing this land over this land. How weird it's going to look. So interesting. Very interesting. Fairy Dragon! Ooh. What's that? No, oh, it just looked the same. I was like, that same card back. Old Art Ochre Jelly. You gotta make those ooze decks for your commander. Get on top of that ooze train. Owlbear! Classic look. Look at that guy. Ooh, look at that. Layer of the Hydra. Until in turn, Layer of the Hydra becomes an XX Green Hydra. Still a land that's going to be good. That is going to be super good. Nothing like a beat down land. You have a bunch of extra land or mana late game. Sure, I'll beat you down for four, five, six. Just keeps growing. Team Matt. Go Team Matt card. River Rubber. Fire Giant. It's okay for five. Treasure Vault. Double X, make X treasures. Eh. For something that only makes colorless, making X treasures for double X. Not that good of a land. Not good of a land at all. Yon T Talisman. It's gotta be interesting. Attack alone, unblockable, and you get to dungeon every time you hit. For two mana, an unblockable creature isn't bad. Hook him up with some of the new equipment, and you can beat down with that guy pretty good. Fullsworth Paladin, making treasures. Another list card, Lesser Gargadon. 1-1 one, one Menace, pay life, make a treasure. Sack a treasure, get plus 2, plus 0. Um, I got two of those in a sealed one. So those guys aren't as bad as they look. Because technically the treasure can be used for, its, obviously, to pay for itself. So you're paying two mana to give target creature plus 2, plus 0. And death touch. Loyal Warband. If one has five more lands, search your library for basic planes. It's pretty cool. I like that. I can see some play. Jin wins here. There's something about this old art foil system that just looks gorgeous. I mean, these every single one of these I've seen has just been amazing. Wow. Purple worm. Sorceress class. Pretty impressed with that. Does lots of stuff. Another list card. 
Enter the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard two cards. Not bad for two. Creatures control have tap blue, red at the center mana pool. You can only use it for instant sorceries though, so if you go big or go home, and then whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell that does damage each each opponent, equal to the number of instant sorcery cards you've cast this turn. Eh. You gotta do a lot of work to get that one to work. I won't say it's terrible, but it does a lot of different things. I need creatures to be able to like ramp out your big spells. So I'm impressed with that one. Mimic. Let's get a foil mimic. That'd be cool. Oh, well, I thought I was gonna get one in the back there too. Wish you may play card you own from outside the game this turn for three. Eh. We'll see. Wishing for whatever you need in your sideboard is good for like older formats. So, oh, look at that turtle. I may have to collect all these guys. Make a little binder of foil throwback cards. Is that the Tarrasque? Uh, no, that's like a lizard, isn't it? What? What? You have stats on the back of these? I don't even know that. The more you know. Look at that. That's crazy. That is nuts. The more you know. You got another Goblin Lord. All goblins get plus one, plus one. Hobgoblin Metal Lord deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under control this turn. To pay red and tap them to shoot... Um, to any target, so you can shoot a player, so that's not bad, but, um, ooh, look at that Demulich. That card is going to be busted. Quad blue. Spell costs one less blue to cast for each internal sorcery spell you cast this turn, which you obviously do. When Demulich attacks, exile up to one target internal sorcery card, and you get to copy it. You may cast that copy. And then you may cast Demulich from your graveyard by exiling four instant. Like, that card's just going to be so good. So good. So good. This is a fire giant? Now that we know that there's stats on the back. What? There's no stats on the back. I got tricked. I got bamboozled. They're tricking me. You can't just be putting them randomly on the back of some cards, but not others. I don't want to know. Eye of Vecna. Part of the eye and hand of Vecna. When I have Vecna and his battlefield, you draw a card and lose two life. You mean your upkeep? You may pay two. If you do, draw a card. You may lose two life. Old Nabone. Big old flying dragon. Not bad. 7 mana, 7 7 flyer. Make a bunch of treasures. Triple rare pack. Old throwback mind flare. Thought we were going for a quad rare pack there for a minute. Quad rare! Is that a mimic? Mimic. Got some stats on there for you. No hunter. Another Drizzt, two in the box. Hydra. Oh, I wonder if that one was a spell of some sort, like a pump spell. Maybe that's why if it's a spell it doesn't have stats. Mimic. Dungeon, yay! Feast your eyes on the worst land in the game. I'm dubbing it the worst land. Um, the worst land used to be... Um, what is it? Sorrow? One of the Sorrow Land from Legends? You need to tap it, you take two damage. Uh, or, no, all creatures you control and you take two damage or something, you can readjust how it, attacking and blockers happen or some stuff like that. Control. Um, but yeah, that, that dungeon land is absolutely atrocious. Like, it comes into play tapped, it only makes colorless. Flumph! Hey, Flumph! Um,. Going into the dungeon isn't that powerful. It's an okay ability, but not super powerful. And you have to tap it for Carlos and another creature, another legendary creature, to just enter the dungeon. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh-oh, we got another fuller back there. No Yanti. Oh, look at that. That is pretty. All right, guys. Well, that was a quick box opening. I just want to knock that out. Um, Got to get to the shop do some sorting and get ready for the week. I'll do another box opening and we got Clotris coming out this week. So, um, look at some of these pretty cards. I love the older cards. I'm just gonna make an old, I'm just making all old the deck, all old cards deck to mess up people. Like, what kind of magic game are you playing? I'm playing the best magic. So, um, let me know what your guys' favorite card from the set is. Um, uh, again, my favorite card or my favorite character in most of D&D is Drist. So I'm going with that card because he's my boy. 
Um, but let me know what your favorite card is in the comments below, and hopefully I'll crack some more packs for you this week. All right, peace out, guys. Have a good one.